joined now by a stunt coordinator who has worked on over 300 television and film productions. But in terms of Doctor Who, he's perhaps best remembered for his work on Black Orchid. So I would like to introduce stunt coordinator Gareth Milne. How are you? Well, thank you very much. I'm really well, yeah. And how are you finding these uh, rather odd times? Um, it's just the same for me. I mean, I've, I, I've now kind of retired from active service. Um, and now I live, you know, quite quietly out in the rural wilds of Spain. And, um, you know, it, m most days are usually, usually the same. I get up really early. I take the dogs for an hour's walk and I get back, we make breakfast. I go to the supermarket, which we're allowed to do. But in Spain, it's been, it, the, the lockdown's been, the lockdown's been quite tough and the Wadia Seville don't take prisoners so we have um, we've been uh, yeah but we've been good good residents and citizens we've we've, we've obeyed it to the letter and uh, but it didn't stop me getting it <laughs> I got the dreaded COVID-19 I got some um, uh, uh, mild symptoms but um, luckily I didn't have what it wanted and it left me alone. It's strange to be dealing with a virus that seems to have an intelligence. It's quite weird being ill with it, but it was all better now. Oh good, I'm glad to hear it. And, but I wanted to take you back to 1982 when you're working on Black Orchid, your first Doctor Who. Now for that, you were not I say, just in inverted commas, a stuntman, but you were actually a member of the cast. Was that common to be so involved in the show at the time? Well, we used to call it, I mean, you know, a lot of my friends in the same generation of stunt people as me, you know, we used to call each other regularly and, and uh, I'd say, so to, you know, to, what are you doing this week? He said, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm monster of the month on Doctor Who. So, and, and what are you doing? So, well, funny enough, they just rung me and they want me to play um, a, uh, you know, one of those things that's I don't know. He's um, he's the, uh, the the brain damaged son of somebody, and they, he's in an attic, and they want me to have a two hour makeup job. Oh, that doesn't sound very nice. No, but I'll do it anyway because I'm not doing anything else that week. And it was basically it was a gig, and 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 the cast were very lo were lovely. I remember the cast; they were cool, and um, they thought because because. You know, it's not it's not beyond uh, the realms of what a stunt performer does is to take on a role um, where, but, you know, and sometimes with dialogue and sometimes with you know sort of interacting with other other actors because you know that a page and a half later you're going to die horribly and your body body gets dumped off a, a bridge. Um, so. Uh, so yes, I mean it is part and parcel of of, of a stuntman's uh, um, job to be able to take on roles like that, and to be able to, and 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 the uh, this particular uh, character in uh, in in question ends up falling off the roof, um, or throwing himself off the roof at the end of the at the end of the piece. So yeah, that's so. That's and it happens all the time. I mean, I used to, you know, I got wise to it after a while because, you know, in certain scenes, you'd be part of a gang that bursts through a door, then there'd be a gunfight, and then there'd be a huge dialogue sequence. So I'd be the first one in, I'd get shot, lie on the floor, and then be continuity for the next two days while everybody else had to stand there. <laughs> Uh, while they shot this this four pages of dialogue um, and I'd be on the floor going hmm. so yeah it's uh, it's it's a kind of uh, it, it's it goes with the territory yeah and I love them I absolutely love them I've done loads of them and they, they've, they've been great fun and you get and you know you get to show you a little bit of acting skill you know whatever that is very tiny bit of acting skill um, but also it's the physicality it always comes with, always comes with, a, you know, the payoff of getting mutilated horribly or beaten to a pulp or run over or, as I say, shot in the head. But um, 
yeah, no, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. And the cast and the cast re realised, you know, the actors realised that that's kind of what you're there for. Because as, as Doctor Who goes, as you say, at the end of the story, you jump off the roof of the building, but you also jump to a burning door, which I suppose must be so sort of fairly straightforward as a stuntman, but not really for Doctor Who. Um, well, you had a very, very um, innovative special effects team. The BBC used to have its own in-house special effects department. And they were all great guys. They really were. And a lot of them are still around in the business, now all freelance and doing their own thing, you know. Um, and, uh, but they set it up and we'd always have a conf lab before. And, and I was very much, very much kind of part of their, their team and their, their um, you know, they'd always ask me, what do you want this made of? How should we do this? What should we, what should we pull? And, 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 and basically we'll put it all camera side and so that when you hit it, it's gone. Um, and so, yeah, it's part of the, it's part of the design process. It's part of the effects um, process. It's, and if, you know, and usually I'm, you know, always happy to go with, with what they recommend because they're, they're good lads and they know what they're doing. And you mentioned earlier the, the prosthetic that you have for that story. How does that then influence the stunts that you do? Because I imagine the visibility was then limited to some extent. Yeah, well, it does mean that you can only see out of one eye. I mean, that <laughs> is a little bit limiting sometimes. But as long as it's your good eye, then it's not a problem. Um, and you get, and you get, you get used to compensate. I mean, I've worn, I've worn costumes and I've worn masks and I've worn prosthetics and I've worn helmets and I've worn, you know, much worse. But that one wasn't a particularly bad one. It, I could see out of half one eye, but um, the, the, <laughs> the, the other eye was clear. Yeah, it did kind of wrong foot me a little bit when I fell off the roof because um, I couldn't actually quite spot well enough when I went. But, and I, I kind of landed slightly on the edge of the boxes and everybody thought I was dead, but it's just one of those, <coughs> it's just one of those, those moments that uh, you put down to experience. I think any stuntman that's ever been or ever will be has had near misses and the occasional accident um, which they will put down to experience but I, you know I, I've been lucky you know a full-on performing career of that, that amount of time I've never really badly hurt myself or anyone else um, and uh, other people haven't been as lucky as me. So we, 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 we do have a casualty list amongst, our, amongst the brethren. Um, and we do our best to support as much as we can. But um, yeah, I don't like talking about acts <laughs> very much. Yeah. But before uh, we started recording, you said you got on very well with the producer, John Nathan Turner. Yes, bless him. Yeah, he was a nice guy. Nice guy. And in terms of, of Doctor Who, you worked twice with Ron Jones, the director. How yeah. did you find him? Was he quite easy to work with? Ron? Oh, uh, yeah. Total gentleman. Yeah, absolutely. Completely kind of yes. Yes. What? Ah, uh, yes. Okay, fine. You, like that? Okay. Super. Okay, shoot it. Um, he was, he, he was, you know, totally sort of like, you know, up for, any, up for anything, really. He, he, he just listened and... And we we worked things out, and we had a good relationship. I mean, things things were kind of different then in the sort of like the early eighties than they are now. Um, you know, directors were approachable. Directors were did want to talk to you. Directors did want to input. Directors wanted to. They just you know these days it's a little bit different. But um, no, he was super. So jumping ahead a little bit, it was no surprise then to be asked back to Doctor Who with Ron for Vengeance of Varos. Yeah, that, that's something I can't remember too much about. <laughs> You're going to have to jog me here because I really, I'm just thinking, Vengeance of Varos, Vengeance, what did I do? What did I come? You're going to tell me what I did, huh? Colin pushes you and another stuntman into a pool of acid. I and remember. you pull the other stuntman in. That's... 
I remember that. Yes, that was that was another coll collaboration with the with the BBC effects team. You know, I could just go. You know, I think I can't remember who the Viz effects. I think it might have been um, Dave Hazard or somebody like that. Have a and I said, what, what, "What's in the tank, Dave?" Said, "Don't worry about it. It's fine." And you know, you <laughs> just sort of like just took it, just land flat. You know, just don't go in head first. But something like that. I'm assuming that was just a couple of days rather than the, you know, the whole episode. I think it was an afternoon, actually, or <laughs> something like that. That's the, that's, the, that's, that's the speed at which um, they, used, they used to, in the days when you, you used to actually do the, the physical, you know, the, the actual live action in the, in the studio within the confines of the concrete donut, you know, to be able to go to the BBC and work in those studios. It actually, I don't know what they do there now. Game shows, probably. I have no idea. Yeah, it's changed quite a lot, I think, since I the days has. of two. But uh, say so between the two stories you mentioned, you doubled Peter Davison for two further stories. Firstly, with Pennant Roberts, in which you fall in over a rail into a water tank, which looked like quite a drop. Do you remember a great deal about that one? No. <laughs> 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 we have to move on. Um, no, um, that was kind of meat and drink. I used to do stuff like that on a daily basis for years. Um, Pennant Roberts, I remember uh, very fondly. Um, Peter Davison, I remember very fondly. I went on to double him and also stunt coordinate this, this, the series he did later on Campion. Um, for the BBC, him and um, and, and and dear Brian, and we we had a we had a good time on that too. Yeah, I don't know, I, I have no idea what Peter's doing now. Hopefully, he's retired. Oh, he's still going, still working. He's still going, he's still working. Bless him. Okay. Yeah. And the final who directs you worked with was Graham Harper for Peter Davison's last story. Oh, a lot yeah. Of, a lot of people pick him out as a very special director because of his energy. Would you say similar? Yeah, I worked for Graham several times after Who as well. Yeah, he 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 was um, he was special. He was there was something about him, um, and I don't know now. You know, there's directors that 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 you work for that kind of stick with you, you know, and sort of stay with you. And he's he stays with me a little bit, Graham. Yeah. So who would be some of the other directors that really stood out for you, outside of Doctor Who? Oh, I work with, <laughs> um, what you mean, apart from Steven Spielberg and Stephen Frears and um, and what's the other bloke? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they're hard-nosed. They're, 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 they're hard work and they're, they demand. And that's good. That's what their job is. Um, and... Uh, but I remember some, I worked with Jonathan Glazer um, a couple of years ago, who was such an impressive bloke. Um, and I worked with, and some of the older directors, you know, the Tristan de Vere Coles, the, uh, and some of them that, that kind of, uh, Michael Bryant's and people that kind of went through the BBC system, but kind of, kind of just tended to sort of like disappear but they were great guys you know um no less talented and no less good a director but they, they just seemed to kind of go out of fashion rather like me you know i mean i, <coughs> I think we all have to face it <coughs> that we're no longer you know we, we no longer sort of fit the modern the modern uh requirements but um and i don't know whether it's got something to do with our attitude or just the fact that we're old i've no idea but um it's a shame that uh that these people are i mean in 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 america it doesn't happen you know there are you know people directing into well into their 80s but nowadays now, nowadays it seems that if you're if you're not in your 30s have an absolutely super duper degree from somewhere and um then you, you you're 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 not going to get behind a camera. Yes, no, very true. And but but in terms of film as well, because I mean, 
I could reel off a long list of iconic films. He not only worked on Bond, but also the Jason Bourne films. Now, both franchises are famed for if you can do a stunt, you know, you do do it. How do the two compare? Well, it's a different, uh, it's a different discipline. First of all, you're not making episodic, episodic drama or episodic uh, television, um, which is all quite hard and fast. Um, you're making something that you do have preparation time for, that you do have, um, which was when I first started doing big movies, I thought, I thought, wow, they're giving us a week to rehearse this. Wow, that's incredible. Thank you. Um, and uh, because they, they want to invest in, because it's a huge investment. Um, they want to invest in getting it right first time. And at least, you know, with episodic te television, they could, you know, haul you out, dust you down, change your costume, put your hat on straight, and then you can do it again, you know. Um, film, film, a lot more preparation a lot more, you know, a lot more really, really sort of like firm, hard schedule. And it moves at this pace and this is the pace that it moves at. And that's how much time we dedicate to this. And that's how much time we do that before we move on to something else. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's a different, it's a slightly different discipline to, uh, to what I'd been used to, to what I'd been used to sort of like growing up in telly. But then I start, started as a performer on uh, on movies, which um, you know you'd be a day player, so you'd come in and you'd see what was going on, and you'd talk to the coordinator, and you'd you'd say, you know, what's my role? This is what you're doing. You're with them doing that. Watch out because there's a you know there's a whole load of bricks going to drop here, and I mean so. You've got a lot of experience. I mean, doing the sort of like the Superman and the and the Indiana Joneses and the um, and the Bonds. You've got a lot of experience, and you work with you know some super people and and who are, who had time. And that's the great thing about the movies that you have time to uh, get your stuff together, but also to form relationships, work good working relationships with the technicians around you. Um, who would uh, give you, you know, give you give you good advice as to how to how to handle what was going on, as far as they were concerned. It wasn't. It wasn't. A, it, it was a. It was a. Um, it was a process which a lot of consideration went into beforehand. Not. You, you get a phone call, oh, we come down to the studio tomorrow, we want you to fall off a thing, you know, and you say, okay. <laughs> but whatever it was, I've never suffered from status anxiety. I've never suffered from, I don't really mind what it is that I work on, you know, and don't really, I, I mean, whatever it was, was fine. Because looking at your work, you say, you know, those action films that are so iconic at the time, but there's also... SEO Trot and Mamma Mia, which must have been very different, hopefully good fun jobs to do. Well, that was me in a safety capacity. Um, that's that's the, uh, the great thing about stunt coordination is that sometimes you just get called to turn up because it says you have to in somebody else's contract. So I had a, um, I had a great time. I got to work with one of my heroes, you know, absolute heroes, Dustin Hoffman. Um, I got to work with, um, with, with, with him and look after him, look after his personal safety, look after his, um, his, his safety generally and the safety of cast and crew when they were working around him, suggest and advise on the best possible ways because, you know, he's, he's a octogenarian now possibly. And, um, I'd, I'd, I'd hate to guess, but, um, and, you know, there's certain frailties that come with people of that age. And uh, you have to really, really be careful how you, how you look after them, how you support them, how you, you know, how you deal with them. Mamma Mia, again, was a safety, um, a, a big safety gig, you know, just to kind of, you know, stop people walking backwards off cliffs and, um, 
make sure that the right safety is in, in place, water safety, um, height safety, you know, a lot of big casts, um, a lot of dancers, you know, and um, just looking after them. And generally. also uh, another film, which I hope was good fun to do, was The Meaning of Life with the Pythons. How were they to work with? Uh, well, um, I, I work with Terry Gilliam, so yeah, you know, sort of like the genius that is. I mean, he, I did the, the um, Voyage of the Crimson Assurance Company, when the office block turns into a galleon and they go off on the high seas of commerce, and then they throw all their executives out of the window. I was the first one to go. Um, and uh, and working with him, and then trying to look after the the um, you know the the pirates who are all you know septuagenarians and octogenarians themselves, actors in uh, actors of uh, that have you know kind of been around for a long time, and um, yeah, that was that 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 was that was an important time. That was an important time you know, getting, working on films like that and learning from people like him, seeing how he worked. I mean, all you wanted to do was please the director, really. That's what, you, that's what you're there to do. You just want to do your best for them. But um, yeah, that was an interesting experience. I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And then who would have been the, the stuntmen that you would have learned from? Ah, I was very lucky. I was very lucky. I had such good stunt coordinators to learn my trade from. Um, I had Vic Armstrong. I did five or six movies with Vic as performer um, on his stunt team. Exacting taskmaster, but knew his onions. You can always tell Vic's films when you look at them because you know where the safety is. He's a very safe man. Peter Diamond who's sadly no longer with us. He um, always had safety at the back of it and taught you how to look after yourself on set. I had, um, I had Peter Braham, I had um, Mark Boyle, I had Paul Weston as my mentors. They, it was a, a smashing bunch of guys to to have because they learnt it as they went along and didn't see any problem in passing it down to the you know the next the next generation but um that generation now is you know there's not many there's not very many of them left <laughs> but they were great guys they really were so by the time you come to be a stunt coordinator and that was sort of the start of computer CGI coming in. How did that influence what you were doing? Um, it didn't really influence what I was doing, is it? But sometimes you felt that you were working for two governors, you know, um, because the, uh, the director would tell you one thing and then the visual effects supervisor would tell you another. Um, and sometimes it got a bit, a little bit confusing. Um, the worst thing, and, and it, it, we've had our ups and downs, you know, with um, Visifex and stunts, because Visifex thinks think that they can boss stunts around, <laughs> and stunts are a little bit kind of resistant to that. Um, but I think we've solved most of our differences now. I mean, the, the, you. I don't think you can walk onto a, uh, a movie set, you know, without encountering at least 50 of them. There's, remember, so, you know, my daughter, who's a stunt called, uh, a stunt performer, she did a lot on Game of Thrones. I remember her ringing me saying, Dad, the studio is full of guys with computers. <laughs> I said, yeah. And she said, but there must be 50 of them. I said, okay. <laughs> you know. Don't worry, <laughs> just do your job. Um, and uh, yeah, it's become it's become an industry all on its all, all on its own. Whereby, but you have to really kind of stand on a little bit and 
you have to be respected in your rights as a stunt coordinator to be able to say, no, sorry, we're not going to do it like that. We're going to do it like this because this is the way we've set it up. And if you don't like it, well, let's go back to the drawing board and start all over again. So yes, they used to think that they could push us around a little bit, but I think now that the honors are probably kind of even, we are respected and, um, and the respect is returned. Early days were a bit tough. <laughs> Especially when they got to sit in the shade with their laptops and their row hands, and we were out there in the desert in the middle, <laughs> in about 45 degrees heat, pushing extras around so they could get their composites. That that was that that was a tough one, but anyway, that was fun. We're, all, we're 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 together on it now. And a more recent film, which I think probably had less CG, was the Dad's Army film you worked on. Yeah, it's one of the, one of the last ones we did. It was great. I mean, working, you know, doing that. I mean, it was. I mean, the the the, the film was kind of almost. I don't know. It was kind of like thrown together. I mean, it was it was it was a difficult. Um, I don't think it was a particularly easy shoot because we were up in up in uh, East Yorkshire and North Yorkshire on the coast and. Uh, yeah, it rained a lot, <laughs> a lot. Um, and uh, but there again, you know, you have um, actors of a certain age um, who have to be have to be looked after, and then you have to make your calls and say, no, I think really we really need a stunt double for him, and we need a stunt double for her, and it all depends on how are we going to sort the action out on this. Sometimes we didn't have time to shoot what we planned to shoot. You know, it was. It was, it, the day was over because it was very, I remember it being very, very heavily scheduled, the film itself. I've not actually seen it, so I don't know what the result was. <laughs> I, having worked on so many iconic series and films, is there one that particularly stands out? Ooh, that's a nice question actually. I mean, They all had their moments. They all had their moments of joy. We had, um, I think, Temple of Doom was probably a high spot as regards a performer for me because I didn't just get to go to China and to Sri Lanka. I also did a lot of work back in the studio. Um, that's when I thought, well, is it always going to be like this? <laughs> the answer to that was no. But it was at that time. It was it was it was a great a great time to be alive. Great time to be a stunt performer. And uh, that was one of the films that I worked on with the Armstrong. Yeah. The um, after forty years, sometimes <clears throat> you think that there is you know a uh, what am I? My body must be in pieces, but. It's actually, as I say, I have actually been very, very lucky. And I've been rehabilitated, really, because I had terrible problems with my neck because I landed on it a couple of times. I had terrible trouble with my hips. But I recommend to anybody that if they have, you know, stage performers, dancers, athletes, um, stunt performers, anybody that's abused their body all their lives, is that there is there is hope. <laughs> and for me, it comes in the form of thebodycave.com. It's a um, a fantastic little organisation of stunties and movement uh, coordinators and yoga specialists to rehabilitate the joints of the body. And it's, it's important to relate that to um, people that come after me, um, that they can find somewhere that they can go. I mean, a lot of people have trouble with their backs, stuff, especially a lot of people have trouble with their necks, a lot of people have trouble with their hips and their shoulders. Those are the main ones. But the bodycave.com, Go and see my mate Jesse and he'll sort you out. 
Well, on that note, I'd just like to say thank you very much for your time, Gareth. Thank you. It's been fun. I've enjoyed it.